Let's get to the appointment of the new executive director at IPID. The Helen Suzman Foundation has approached the courts to have that process relating to the renewal and the appointment of the head of the Independent Police Investigative Directorate, or IPID, uh, uh, reverse that particular process. Now, the foundation wants the process to be constitutional and free of political interference. Joining me to unpack this further is Helen Suzman Foundation's legal counsellor, Anton van Doslin. Anton, good evening and thank you very much for your time on uh, the news feed late night. On the 7th of July, you wrote a letter uh, opposing this. Uh, in fact, you were calling for halting the processes of appointing uh, the executive director at IPID because you're saying these three individuals, the uh, former uh, executive director at IPID, the portfolio committee uh, in parliament, as well as the minister of police, uh, they are falling short of full legal compliance as far as uh, the appointment of uh, the executive director is concerned. Take us back to exactly how does this conflict arise? Yeah, let, let's just take a step back. I think one needs to... to go into the history to understand what is going on. Um, when the, um, uh, uh, Robert McBride, as head of IPED, when his uh, term of office was not renewed, uh, that was done on the suggestion of the Minister of Police, and that was confirmed by the Portfolio, of, of Poli Portfolio Committee of Police in Parliament. Um, and it settled law, a number of constitutional court cases on this, that for posts that have a, a political sensitivity, it is not uh, lawful for political office holders to be involved in the renewal or non-renewal of their, their um, terms of office. The reason for this is clear because it makes it possible for political office holders to make renewals or non-renewals subject to the office holder doing something or not doing something. So uh, when the, the uh, term of office of uh, Robert McBride was not renewed, uh, our position is that this was unlawful. It was unlawful for the minister and for the Portfolio Committee of Police to get involved in this whole process. Um, and as a result of that, uh, the, the new, uh, they made a new appointment. Um, and as far as we are concerned, uh, the, the uh, appointment of Robert McBride as head of IPED uh, that that term of office uh, has not ended and therefore any um, new appointment is not in void. Yeah. How, however, that particular position then was vacant as from the 28th uh, of uh, February in 2019. And it really took um, uh, way over the time that it was supposed to, uh, to have been filled, right up until the point where it was filled sometime uh, in, in July via a process uh, that was endorsed by Parliament. So take me through what process Parliament followed and the Minister of Police in uh, making sure that McBride's contract is not renewed? Um, what they did was the Minister of Police sent through a recommendation that his term of office not be renewed to the Portfolio Committee, and the Portfolio Committee in Parliament effectively rubber-stamped that. And uh, our position is quite clear that both the Minister and the Portfolio Committee in Parliament, which is uh, effectively controlled by the ANC majority, that these are political role players and political role players should not play a role in the renewal or non-renewal of people who have uh, offices or um, positions which are politically sensitive. So constitutionally then, who is supposed to decide on the renewal of, of, of uh, the, 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 the contract of the executive director? And I, I'm under the impression that parliament is to an extent supposed to play some kind of oversight uh, as far as the renewal of that contract is concerned. Yeah, uh, we have no, no problem with parliamentary oversight, but uh, parliament as a, uh, as a political player cannot take a, a position or a decision where the position is politically sensitive. Now, the, the, the issue is that the Act, the IPED Act, says that the uh, head of IPED is uh, appointed for five years, uh, and which is a term of office which is renewable for a further five years. Now, the Act does not state who is to decide on this. But the Constitutional Court has said in a number of judgments that it is not, it is not uh, permissible for political office holders to 
take decisions of this nature. So as far as we are concerned, it is quite clear that neither the Minister of Police nor the uh, Portfolio Committee of Police and Parliament were allowed to get themselves involved in this whole process. Right. Now, initially, of course, uh, then Robert McBride challenged the fact that the, the minister did not want to renew his term uh, in office uh, and didn't give reasons and said this was uh, irrational. It does turn out that they got into some kind of a deal uh, and uh, this deal that they struck, you're saying it later made its way uh, and was made into a court order. And, and, and that's part of what uh, you're, you're trying to challenge, is it not? Exactly. And, and the fact that it's a court order doesn't, uh, you cannot get away from the fact that this is an unlawful and unconstitutional decision. So uh, for, the, for a court to rubber stamp an unlawful agreement is, is, remains unlawful. The fact that it's a court order does, doesn't change that. So Section 6 of Section 5 then of the IPID Act does, does not give Parliament power yes, to extend uh, the, the, the period of, of, of the executive director, but it is also very clear uh, on the strict process that must be followed uh, in appointing a new executive director. And the minister says, well, all those processes, for example, were followed. It was advertised, 24 candidates uh, were selected, and there was a, a recruitment company that uh, narrowed down that number to, to five, and eventually there were three, and those three are the ones that were then taken to Parliament, and Parliament then ended up with the director that we have now, Mr. Tansing, uh, being nominated on the 30th of June. What do you find fault in that process? Well, um, just to make it clear, we, we uh, make no comment on the, the, uh, the person who is, who is uh, appointed. Um, the issue is that the uh, non-renewal of Robert McBride's term of office was unlawful uh, for the reasons that I've, I've tried to explain. And if that is unlawful, then the position is not open for somebody else to be appointed. Therefore, that new appointment is null and void. And uh, we were in court and the, the Supreme Court of Appeal on Friday uh, appealing against the uh, order of court, the um, court order that was made in the Counting um, North High Court. Um, and um, this, the case has been postponed till the beginning of next year. Um, but they, they, we will get clarity at some stage. It's taking its time. But uh, the point is that if an unlawful process led to a non renewal of a position, then you cannot go and appoint somebody else in a position which effectively is not open. What, what then would be the impact of this, uh, particularly when it comes to, to, to the, this new appointed executive director? Should indeed the courts find that uh, uh, you are correct and your, and, and, and your view is, is, is the one that should be followed? Well, that would mean effectively that the appointment of the new executive director is null and void. All right. Appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us uh, today. That is Anton van Dalsen there. Uh, he is, of course, uh, representing the Helen Suzman Foundation.